Hey everybody, welcome to Gardening TLC. I am Michelle. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I am so excited about today's video. We are going to talk about spring bloomers for your garden and not bulbs. We're going to talk about some perennials, some trees, some shrubs, all of those wonderful things that give you some flower power early in the season before everything really gets going. I'm going to talk about 10 of my favorite and hopefully there's one in there that speaks to you. So come along as we check this out. It's going to be awesome. First on my list is a hellebore or a Lenten rose. I really like Lenten rose because they are those hardy, hardy perennials that come back every single year. And I have seen these guys, in fact, this year in my garden, these guys were blooming in February. We had like a little bit of a break early in the season where we had some warm weather and these guys were peeking up. They were fabulous. We've actually had a couple snowfalls and they're still hanging out outside. They look great. There are different series of hellebores out there. So make sure you find the one that you like. Most of them are going to grow 18 to 22 inches high. They get about 18 inches wide and then most of them will grow in zone four through nine. So I like the wedding series and I like the honeymoon series. Both of those are really nice. And I like to find the ones that have a little bit more of an upright tilt on the flower, even though I like them when they're down as well. I like to see the flower. So I always try to find those. Those are the ones that speak to me. Check out the flowers on these. Most of the time on the hellebores, you can find a lot of them that are two-tone where the throat is one color and the petals are another and even a third color because the outside of them sometimes is a different color and you'll have a darker edge. Most of the flowers on our hellebores, you know, they're two to three inches across. They're not crazy big. They're delicate. They're beautiful. But when they're done, they are considered semi-evergreen in some of the climates that you grow them in and they hang out and look like a really nice plant all summer long. I like to use them in pots a lot because they hang out for a long time in the pot. And then when I'm done with them, I can take them and transfer them into my landscaping, which is what I actually did with the ones I have out in my garden. So try a hellebore if you never have. They are fabulous. I also like creeping phlox. This is really super nice if you have a rock wall or you have something that this can creep through or a rock garden. It grows really super low to the ground, but it does have a really cold tolerance. So all the way up to zone two. Now this one here is Scarlet Flame and it's uh, a beautiful pink color, but there's blue, there's white, there's multicolored ones. There's a lot of different ones out there. They are pretty drought tolerant, but I'd say they need water at least once a week if it's not raining. And as far as maintenance go, every once in a while, I'll give mine a little bit of a shear back to keep them tidy and neat. But a lot of people just let them grow. Now, what I find here in Illinois zone five is if I don't give them a little bit of a haircut at the end of every season, they have a tendency to get kind of woody and I want them to stay soft and matted into the ground. And so this is a great ground cover to give you some really beautiful spring color. And wow, are they impactful when they are all blooming at once? And it looks like a carpet of flocks that's just blooming in an area that you put them in. They are fabulous. So if you're looking for some early color to add to the garden, I have a close up here of the flower itself. It has five petals. That's kind of how you can identify it because I'm getting ready to show you a couple other ground cover ones that I really like. I do like these because they are that nice matte. They're really bold. They look beautiful in the garden and when they're blooming, it is very impactful. The companion plants that I like to put with these are tulips because they kind of bloom at the same time. So if you have mid blooming or late blooming tulips, you can time these to bloom together and it's absolutely gorgeous. These guys Guys only get like four to six inches tall. So absolutely perfect as a ground cover in a uh, rock garden over the edge of a wall. Great places that you could add these to your garden. I like this next one as well. This is a rock crest. And as you can see, it's white. I do like white in the spring. It really brightens up the browns that are everywhere else because this is going to bloom when everything else is still sleeping. As you can see from the picture that I put in here of the flax, you can identify it because it's only got four petals on it. So it's a little bit different. This also gets taller than flax. So it's going to top out at around 12 inches. It will grow in a little bit of shade, but it really wants full sun. I like this as an addition in the garden. So if you're looking for an early spring bloomer, try rock crest. This is a purple rock crest, so it's a little bit different than the white one that I just showed you. It still only has the four petals on it and the little eye in the center, but this guy wants full sun and he is super drought tolerant. If you can find this one, it grows great in a container. It's great as a ground cover, but it can get aggressive, so be careful. 
check with maybe your local garden center and find out if this is aggressive in your area before you plant it. Here I've planted it and it's been pretty well behaved. I've had it creep a little bit further than I wanted it to, but it was pretty easy to get out of the ground. So just know that about this one, but I love the purple color. But if you don't want this, they do sell creeping phlox in purple. So you might be able to check the box of that low ground cover with either one of these plants to add to the spring garden. This next one is an Iberius Sempervirens or a candy tuft. Now this is actually classified as a woody sub shrub, although a lot of times you see it sold as a perennial. This guy actually wants drier conditions and it doesn't want to sit any place in standing water. It needs really good drainage if you're going to grow it. I do like Candy Tuft. It does have a nice white flower on it. Now this guy wants really good drainage. So you wanna make sure that you maybe amend with some gravel, or if you have a rock garden, this would be really good, or on the edge of a wall. Cause typically if a wall is made, if it's constructed properly, they have backfilled it with gravel so that the water drains through the wall, this is a good place for a candy tuft. Now it doesn't like high humidity and it does want full sun, but it doesn't want hot afternoon sun. So a little pickier about where you're gonna plant it, but if you can find the right site on your location, well worth growing. As you can see, it comes in more colors than white, although there are some really nice white varieties out there. This one is called Pink Ice and I really like this one as well. It's got that delicate, soft blush pink. Now, again, even though it says that it grows in zone three through nine, it doesn't want that high humidity. So make sure you have the right conditions to grow this. They don't really need to be fertilized. I don't think it hurts it if you fertilize them, but they don't need that. So if you wanna try, a really beautiful plant and you have the right conditions for it, try Candy Tuft. I do like old fashioned bleeding hearts. I think they are absolutely gorgeous in the landscape. And when you're looking for something that you can grow in the shade, this one checks the box. They are super easy to propagate. You can actually just dig a little piece of yours up and split it and then put it back in the ground and you'll get more of them. Now, what I find with the bleeding hearts is that if you have them in an area that's really hot or you have them in an area that maybe gets some sun on it, you're gonna find that during the middle of the summer, they might die back to the ground and then you end up with a hole in your garden. So if that happens, be prepared to fill that hole somehow. But what I do with mine is when they're done flowering, I go and cut the foliage in half. Then it produces some, a new flush of foliage and it tends to hang on for the rest of the year. They are, I would call semi drought tolerant. Usually they'll hold on pretty good for a week without water. But then after that, if there's been no rain, I find that I have to get some water on them. I love the flower structure. I like the way this plant looks, the way it arcs and it branches. They can get pretty big, up to three feet under the right conditions. So if you're looking for a bleeding heart, I would try one. The old fashioned ones, you can't go wrong with, but there's a lot of new cultivars out there that you could try. There's the Valentine, the Gold Heart, that actually has like a chartreuse yellow foliage on it. So lots of different ones to choose from. My next happy plant is forget-me-nots and they come in white, blue, and pink. And I really like the blue because it is blue and it's really hard to find a blue flower that's really blue, that's not purple, but they call it blue, and the landscaping. Forget-me-nots are those ones that come up. They're not around for a very long time, but when they come up, they're so beautiful. Now, the one thing you do need to know about forget-me-nots is that they will self-seed and spread their love around, but I'm okay with them spreading around in my garden because they don't stay forever. They kind of disappear back into the landscaping and then something else comes up. They grow in zone five through eight. They only get six to eight inches tall. So if you're gonna do this one, I would plant it in drifts. Let's take a close up look at the flower. Remember how I told you to find a flower that speaks to you? I don't know what it is about this flower. It totally speaks to me. I love this thing from the really ruffly little flower that's on there that's green to the yellow eye that's in there to that textured foliage. And then the stems, when they come up, they're like this rusty brown. I don't know. Everything about this plant just Oh, Michelle, I love it. Anyways, this guy is so neat and tidy, grows in zone five through nine, really nice front of the border plant that you can put in there. And the foliage looks good even when the flowers are done. But those flowers are super long lasting. I have done these guys in pots as well as in the ground. 
I don't know, the Primula Polyantha Francesca, oh, just says Michelle all over it. Here is another primrose. I do like primrose. They're so cheery and they are nice in pots and they do bloom for a long time. This one is a Primula vulgarius. Okay, so this one grows in zone four through seven and they've been around for a long time. This is what I would call one of those old fashioned flowers. They are so pretty with their cheery yellow flowers. Now with primrose, they do want to have good drainage and they want to have pretty consistent moisture. So they don't want to like completely dry out in between waterings. So if you have an area that gets water like that, great. Otherwise, you probably will have to go out there and keep them moist. I never have a problem with them because we get enough moisture in the spring that they are happy and they take care of themselves. So I like it at the front of the border. I like it in pots. Primrose for me is just a great flower for early spring. Check out this little beauty. This is a pulsatilla or a pasquay flower, super early bloomer. We have them in the garden beds out in front of the uh, garden store. So when they are in bloom, I'll show you here in Northern Illinois. Oh my gosh, it can't decide if it wants to be spring. We're actually getting some more snow tonight. Oh, I'm so over the snow. I wish it would just warm up and stay warm. I wanted to start our vegetable series this week. Not happening because the weather is just not cooperating. Right now it's cold and rainy and that's all going to switch to snow overnight, which is no fun. But back to my pulse, I can't even say it right, pull, pulsatilla. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. You guys will all correct me down below if I said it wrong. They're pretty hardy, pretty reliable. They'll come back every year. My last perennial on the list is a longwort or a pulmonaria. This one is the Pink of Blue by Proven Winners. This is my, now it's now my favorite longwort. I love this one. I love the flowers on this and they come out really super early. So the ones that we overwintered last year in our greenhouse, they are already blooming their flowers. What's really cool is when the flowers are closed, they're pink and then they open blue. So you've always got this pink and blue flower going on, but you really don't grow this plant for the flowers, but you get the bonus of these flowers early in the spring, which is totally awesome. But look at that long elongated leaf on there, those beautiful splotches. This is a beautiful plant, even when the flowers are done. It grows in the shade and it's deer resistant. So you got to love that about any plant that you put in your garden. So if you want to try a pulmonaria or a lungwort and you've never tried one before, this is the one that I would definitely recommend you go get and put it in your garden this year. Do you think I get a little excited when spring rolls around? I love spring and I love the newness and the freshness and just it's a new year and new ideas and a new opportunity to grow things. This picture was taken, I don't know, five or six years ago and this weeping cherry came in and I absolutely fell in love with it so much that we planted it in front of the garden center. It's still growing there to this day. I love weeping cherries, they are so pretty. Now you can grow this a couple different ways as far as how you groom it and what it looks like. I know some people like cut all the branches and make it look like a little umbrella canopy. That's not what I like. I like it to look like a weeping tree and have different lengths of uh, branches that come down off of it. It blooms for a couple of weeks, really super early in the spring. I do like this tree and I like the white blooms. I like the structure of it, what it looks like in the winter. Nice, interesting specimen plant that you could put in your garden if you're looking for like a little tree to put in there. These guys are great. I like Eastern Red Buds. They will grow in part shade, so they're great as an understory tree as long as they're getting four hours of sun, but they will grow in full sun as well. Now, if you're going to grow them in full sun, they're going to have more of a compact, symmetrical habit when they grow. And if you grow them in light shade, they're going to have more of a delicate arcing form. So just know that based on the light conditions they get, that can determine how your tree looks. Now, whether you grow them in shade or sun, they want good drainage. They do not want to sit in standing water. So make sure that wherever you put them, the water drains away. Now plant them a little bit high as well, then put your mulch up to it to cover that root crown. That will help with drainage as well. They absolutely are gorgeous when they get these purple flowers because they get the purple flowers before they get the leaves. So this is a beautiful show of lavender flowers early in the spring. And then when they get their leaves, they're this beautiful heart shape they're so pretty. Now I do some pruning on mine to kind of keep it open and cleaned up. And I did have to do a couple initial 
pruning cuts at the very beginning to get the shape that I wanted. But other than that, I fertilize it once in the spring and I just let it do its thing. I do like magnolias. Now here in Northern Illinois, yeah, I can't grow that Southern magnolia, but I can grow this magnolia. This is a Jane. There's also an Anne. I like the Jane. I have one growing in my yard. I've had it for about six years. It is really getting some nice size on it. It's got a great shape to it. I really like this magnolia. It blooms for me a little bit later than some of the other ones, like the star magnolias here have already bloomed and they're already lost all their flowers. This one blooms a little bit later, so I have a better shot of holding on to all my flowers through the spring and it is a gorgeous show once this thing starts to bloom. Now, these guys get taller than they do wider, so they have kind of a base shape to them. They are gonna top out around 25 feet, maybe. They will grow in full sun or part shade, so you have an option of where you wanna put these guys. They only get 15 to 20 feet wide, so you gotta give it a little bit of room to grow, but oh, I love this tree. I cannot do this video and not talk about forsythias because they are one of the earliest blooming shrubs that you're going to see in the landscape. And oh my goodness, when they bloom, they are gorgeous. Now, we're not talking about these old rangy ones that everybody used to grow that were turned into this giant monster bush. We're talking about the three that are available from Proven Winners in the Show Off series. And so this here is the Sugar Baby. Isn't he cute? And what I love about what they have bred in these forsythias is it blooms from tip to bottom. It is covered in these yellow flowers. And I like that they have the small, the medium, and the large. So the small, the sugar baby, only getting about two and a half feet high, three feet wide. They grow in zone five through eight, and they definitely put on that show in the spring. Aren't these gorgeous? They're deer resistant. They'll grow in part shade. They do their best in four to six hours of sun, but you could probably push it in the two to four. They also have the different sizes. So the show off six by six, if you want a big one, and then the starlet, which is three by three, if you want the medium one. Look at these flowers. They are gorgeous. And then you have this big, beautiful shrub when it's done. I don't ever fertilize mine, but if you are going to fertilize it, what you're going to do is wait till after the flowers are done. That's when you're going to prune it after the flowers are done. Then I fertilize mine, prune it up if I need to, and then wait till the show next year. Do you want to do a double take in the garden? Oh my gosh, then plant a double flowering quince. Proven Winners has totally nailed it on these shrubs. They have the scarlet, there's a peach, and there's a white. These guys are spectacular in the garden. They get about five feet high, so that's about as tall as I am. And then they're going to get four feet wide, so they need a little bit of room. It still is a nice shrub, even when it's done flowering. These guys are more than just pretty spring flowers, though. They're thornless, they're deer resistant, they don't produce fruit. And once they're established, they are a drought-tolerant survivalist. They are awesome and a workhorse in the garden, a great anchor or back of the border shrub that you could put in to add total beauty to your garden. I would, I'm excited about these. I'm going to get some. I think they're awesome. It's the only thing that I put on my list that I've never grown, but I am excited to get one and grow one. All right, you guys, wasn't that a total awesome list? If you're looking for early spring bloomers to add to your garden, go to the garden centers, check them out, get some in your garden this year for next year, and you can enjoy the fabulous show with some of these really super easy to grow perennial shrubs and trees. Because I gave you 10 perennials. I think there was three trees and two shrubs. Just think about adding some of that through your landscaping, how much color you're going to add. I can't wait for it to decide to actually be spring. Every year we go through this where it snows and then it's cold and then it rains. And I feel like here in northern Illinois, we really don't get spring. It kind of goes from winter to wet and cold to kind of sort of warm sometimes into blazing hot summer. But you know what? This is where I live. This is what we deal with. And you guys do too. I do know that I am going to start the videos on the vegetables and the herbs next Monday because I checked the forecast. The weather's going to break. So if you want to follow along with the vegetable videos, make sure you tune in every Monday at 6 o'clock because that's when we're going to roll those out. So you guys, thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. Keep on gardening. Bye, everybody.